Some of you may recognize this car. It's the Radio Shack Porsche 962C. Now this is um, an older, uh, much older, I would probably assume it to be a vintage um, radio controlled car. I can't get him any, anywhere now except for on eBay. Uh, this particular car uh, was given to me by a friend of mine and I use that term given to me fairly loosely because yes it's in my possession and he gave it to me and said here it's yours you can have it. Uh, he does have two small boys that I'm sure when they get a little bit older they may like to play with it and I'm leaving it open to him that anytime he wants it back all he has to do is tell me I'd gladly give it back to him. Uh, at the time he gave it to me uh, one of the front wheels was broken. His grandfather I think he said repaired it once and it was actually pretty decent repair but it managed to break again. And I did a few other little modifications to it. Um, you could say that this is, uh, you could now call this a sleeper. Uh, it is much faster than it was. And also, um, well, the wheel broke again last time I was uh, driving it around. So, what we'll do this video, I'll take the body off, I'll show you what I did to make it better, and I'll show you how to fix that front wheel. From the bottom view, uh, we can see a few of the changes that I made here before we take it apart. Uh, one thing you'll notice is a plug sticking out the bottom for a battery. Uh, I removed all of the metal tabs for the batteries. I shaved down the inside here. That way, we can fit one of these battery packs. So uh, this is just a 9.6 volt battery pack. Plug it in, put that on, the cover goes back on, and this is a lot easier than changing out batteries all the time. Just get a couple of these packs and charge them up. So, to uh, take the body off, we just need to remove a few screws here. So, uh, let me do that off camera. Okay, so with the screws out, we can just lift this part off, set that to the side, and let's take a look here. So, right off the bat here, we can see we have a actual servo a hobby grade servo and we have a speed controller and as you can tell here three wires meaning that it's got a brushless motor in it and I have a cheap hobby grade receiver the um, and the switch I put right down here to get access to the switch it's right under the bottom here all right now the motor and the main reason I decided to do this uh, I also, at about the same time I received this uh, from somebody else, I received a um, T-Rex 450 that had been crashed and was in really bad shape. And I was in the process of rebuilding that. And I noticed that the motor had a weird clicking noise in it. And uh, so I took it to the hobby shop, had them check it out. And the advice they gave me was, they said, you can use this in anything you want as long as it doesn't fly. And as soon as they told me that, I knew exactly where I was going to try to put it. So... I took the gearbox apart, and we can see the motor right here. And I got lucky on this one. This motor, that brushless motor, that's the that's the brushless motor for the T-Rex 450. It was perfectly the exact same size as the brushed motor that was in here. And it was just a perfect, perfect fit. Now there was also, right in here, there was a selection for fast or slow. Uh, one other problem with this car when, when my friend gave it to me was the fast and slow uh, didn't quite work. Uh, one of the gears was stripped out. So instead of trying to find a new gear or make a new gear, I just found an exist. I I, I've got drawers full of gears. I found one that fit uh, both the gears inside of the existing gearbox and a pinion for the motor. And it just, you know, through a little bit of good luck, it all just kind of fit. And this thing with that brushless motor in here, uh, this thing screams. Uh, one reason why I want to hurry up and get this thing fixed is because with the other video I put out, you know, I have the app with my smartphone to um, check the speed. Got the speedometer app. I'm dying to find out how fast this thing is now. Um, I would be willing to bet it's at least twice as fast as it was stock. Probably, probably more than twice. Unfortunately, I've got no way to verify that or confirm that. So if any of you out there have one of these stock that still works and you want to put your speedometer phone on it 
and try it out and leave a comment on how fast yours is. Um, I would really like to know, um, just have something to compare it to. So what we'll do, I'll uh, fix the wheel and we'll put this thing back together and we'll take it out and do a speed test. Now, as far as the wheel is concerned, if we take a look right there, that piece broke off. If we get the, um, the little steering arm here, and we're going to get that to show up very good. That goes in like right here. So that corner of it broke off. Come on, cooperate. That corner, you can see where that broke off. So my original plan, oh, and you can see where it has been repaired before. Um, it broke, it split right along here. So they wrapped wire around it and super glue. And that actually has been holding up pretty well. Um, so my plan is to cut a piece out of this aluminum channel here and basically just make it to where it'll fit over top of that and I'll just bond that in place. So I'll cut a new piece that'll go over that. Uh, like I said, I'll bond it in place and then I'll wrap it. I'll wrap it with um, carbon fiber strands, carbon fiber toe. So the way we do this is we basically, it's, uh, you know, it's not... Uh, it's nothing too complicated here. Uh, we just hold that up, and with your favorite pencil, um, you just kind of trace. Yeah, I know what you guys are thinking. You're thinking that you're never supposed to touch metal with a graphite pencil, okay? That is partly true depending on what kind of metal. For example, if you're working on a part, a steel or stainless steel part that goes in a turbine engine, like an exhaust pipe, for example. And if you make a mark on that with a graphite pencil, that will react and it will corrode and cause a crack and that part will fail. I guarantee you that can happen. It has happened. Um, not speaking from experience, you know, that's just what I heard. So will graphite affect an aluminum part? I have no idea, but for something like this, it's not going to be an issue. Okay, so after I marked that out, I went to my trusty bandsaw and cut a piece out. Now I drilled a hole first. You know, one thing I'd like to do is drill the hole first and then grind and file around the hole so it looks like I'm able to drill symmetrically or evenly or centered or whatever. So anyways, this will eventually be that way, like that. But I'm gonna to have to take this to my belt sander, I've sand it to shape, to a respectable shape. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna leave that little lip on here or not. The idea was that lip would set on like that, give it a little bit more strength, more support. But um, now we'll see how it goes. So let me go get this all sanded down. Uh, you guys, I don't know if you really care to see that or not. I'll just do it off camera. Uh, it's just holding this in front of the belt sander is all is until it gets to the, uh, the shape I like. So let me go do that and I'll be right back with you. All right, so you know how I said if you drill the hole first and then you can file evenly around it instead of trying to worry how to get the hole perfectly centered? Well, that's obviously just in theory. I mean, sometimes it works better than others. Uh, it's not the perfectly shaped piece. If this was for something important, I think I would redo it. But for what it is, it'll be fine. Let's uh, get a look-see in how it fits here. So that goes over... It'll slide down and you can see that pretty much perfectly lines up where that hole was. Um, I think what I'll do, see the light on there any better? What I'll do is I'll kind of, I'll glue that in place. Then I'll go in with, uh, I'll go in with a hobby knife and uh, just shave off the plastic here so that doesn't interfere with the, um, with the wire that goes through there. Now, yeah, that'll be offset a little bit. Um, obviously the, the push wire will go in a little bit higher than what it was. Um, but I just looked at the rest of the car and the suspension. I don't think it's going to matter. I think it'll still be okay. Uh, it's basically this wire... Let me get this off. Yep. Helps to know how to take that off. Um, so again, that's this setting down in here like that. 
Um, yeah, that does push the wire up the thickness of that aluminum piece. But uh, like I said, it should not affect anything at all. I think it'll be fine. So let me get that glued on. And again, once that's glued on, and then wrapped with carbon fiber strands, and that's cut off, we can then put this back on and uh, take it for a drive. Put it back together and take it for a drive. So here's the piece glued on, and uh, just gonna make sure you don't, you know, glue that so it can't turn. But um, holes in the right spot. I trimmed back, trimmed back here, so it won't interfere with the wire coming through. So the next thing I want to do to make sure it uh, doesn't come off or break again is to wrap that with a carbon fiber toe. And uh, so this is the stuff I'll be using. And I got this on a spool. Uh, from eBay probably and what I'll do is I'll just pull off a few strands probably about that many or so maybe a little less a little bit less than that and I'll start off by just gluing a bit like right here let that set and then wrap around a few times put some more uh, glue what I'm using I'm using the um, super thin super thin CA uh, that will soak into the fibers and bond it to the uh, to the arm there. Again, very important not to let the glue run into the axle so the wheel can still spin. I would take this off the axle, um, but that's been broken a few times and bonded in. I don't want to take any chances of breaking this again trying to press the axle out of here. So I'll just do my best to wrap that and glue it without, you know, without getting any glue into the uh, spinning part. Um, so again, easy on the glue. Uh, just do a little bit at a time until the whole thing is completely wrapped from about. What I'll probably do is go all the way from here to about here. And that should be plenty enough, more than enough. And in case you're wondering, the strength is in the carbon, not the CA. The CA is just there to keep the carbon in place and keep it from coming unraveled. And I have fixed several things with this method of wrapping with carbon toe and CA and I've never had anything break or come apart after after doing that. So let me get that wrapped and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. I think if you remember properly you'll remember I said it won't be pretty. It definitely is not pretty but it's functional and it will never get seen again hopefully. So the next thing, we'll just put it together, see how it works. There it is, all back in place. Let me uh, put the body on it, charge up the battery, and go take it for a drive. All right, so I got my speedometer on there. Again, in the uh, typical high-tech safety crash device. So we'll see how fast this thing goes. All right, whenever you're ready, go. So it's only 15 mile an hour, which kind of sucks, but I also just realized it has a stripped gear in it. So we'll try to play around with it a little bit more, but uh, we'll probably have to fix the gearbox. There you go. Yeah, that's no good. Yeah, I'll we'll have to fix that. <laughs> it's done. So remember when I said that my friend could have this back anytime he wants it? Here it is, Sean. You can have it. I'm just joking. I want to end this video here. Um, I will revisit this some other time. Not anytime soon. When I do revisit this, um, what I will do is I will take the gearbox apart and fix whatever is wrong in the gearbox. Uh, like I said, I, I did put a different gear in there before, and I don't know if that's the one that's stripped out or not. Um, I'll just have to tear it apart until it looks like. Maybe that's why they say not to put a brushless motor in an old toy grade car. I don't know. We'll make it work, though. One other thing I'll do, um, because this thing, I swear, when I first put that motor in it, 
I swear it hit more than 15 mile an hour. I would have put it closer to 20 to 25. Um, I'm sure the uh, screwed up gearbox is slowing it down a bit. But when I do revisit this to fix it, one other thing I'll do is instead of having it run on that battery pack, I will modify it to run on that battery pack. So that'll give me uh, a little bit more power. Um, in order to do that, I will have to cut that opening out deeper because right now uh, it's too fat to fit in there so uh, that shouldn't be too difficult though but um, yeah so I'm gonna end it here uh, like I said don't uh, don't hold your breath for the next video um, like I said it'll be much later down the road before I get back to this I have several other projects I need to finish like this one and a few other things um, but, anyways, as always, thanks for watching.